Hello and welcome to Art Show. I'm Craig Stover and today I have with me Donna Quinn. Hi Donna, how are you? Hi Craig, how's it going? Very good. I want to first share some images of yours for the people who are unaware of your work. Mm, um, okay. So I selected, I went online and I selected a few pieces mm -hmm. and I was hoping you could tell me about these. Mm, um, okay. What is this, this one? one? This one. Um, this one, I, uh, I don't even remember the title for this one. It's probably <laughs> in the last couple of years. Um, I went through a phase where I really, um, fell in love with this pink chalk paint. So everything I did from that era had that sort of pink hazy chalk paint, but, mm -hmm. um, it, it's kind of like a lot of my, my abstract pieces where I explore the tactileness of the surface and I build up the surface and I love texture and love making marks and um, that little piece on the side, the, the black shape was done with um, some of these water soluble crayons that I was ex experimenting with. So when, when I, I had this question for later, but I gotta ask it now. Uh, several of these paintings you list as mixed media. Mm -hmm. What does that really mean? Like, oh. like. <laughs> so if I don't want to uh, like list everything out. Mixed media for me is um, modeling paste. Okay. It's it's gesso. It's 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 crayon. It's paint. It could be glue. It could be paper mounted on a wood panel. Um, yeah, I think it's just the, the typical. I mean, I'm not using anything that you can't get at an art supply store. Yeah. Okay. I was just kind of curious because that means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. Yeah. So I'm just kind of curious. Mm -hmm. And then I found uh, you have these wonderful shaped pieces. They're on they're on cardboard. Yes. Yes. I love I love these. What um, kind of size are we talking about with these? We're talking they... like maybe you know, okay. like twelve inches. All um, right. Yeah. And where did one... where do these shapes come from? They actually come from some of the some of the drawings and shapes in the painting. I have this really horrible habit when I'm painting, um, when I worked on canvas and I made larger paintings, I had a habit of focusing on, you know, one or two little areas and then forgetting about the rest of it. And so um, I remember, you know, I, I'd done a couple of shows where I stood in front of my work and I would, would point to the one thing on the painting that I wanted people to look at. And I realized that was, Probably not a great idea. I should let people experience it for themselves. But a lot of these shapes, I wanted to bring them out of the painting and make them three dimensional and see what they would look like without all of the stuff around them. And um, cardboard, you know, I, I use card cardboard. I use a lot of cheap materials when I'm experimenting. But but these came out really sweet. I I just love these. The, I like the, the shape because I I like how it's so defined on that curve and then the those little fingers i'll call them fingers yeah, uh, they're yeah. so chunky and that's it's that's what i really like about them they're like it, it's such a contrast to the lower part where it's so smooth and curved mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i really there's a, there's a partner piece to this that um was purchased because the guy that got it thought it looked like a catcher's mitt so oh yeah <laughs> yeah you're right about the finger thing yeah so some of these shapes, I mean, I, I can't help but think of other artists. Mm -hmm. uh, so mm -hmm. like this one, I was thinking about Mark O'Reilly, um, some of those loop pieces. I was thinking mm -hmm. Cy Twombly, you know, just oh, sort yeah. of the, the that rough handmade mark is just, mm -hmm. it's delicious. And I, I see that in your work. Of course, yeah. I'm, I'm probably pulling out artists that that you're not looking at. Oh, but. oh, oh, you, you said Twombly. Yeah, that's, you know, that's um, <laughs> one of my favorites, uh, just making, making marks that can be soft and lyrical, but also packing a punch. Um, and a lot of those, a lot of those marks are made by building up the texture, letting it dry, and then scratching into it with either my hand or other like tools, silicone tools, um, and seeing what emerges once I put a wash of paint on there. And the marks just make themselves. The surface mm -hmm. sort of emerges. So, um, yeah, I, I like how they have a kind of a used quality to them. Like, because mm, the shape is the shape is handmade, but the mm -hmm. textures are natural made to me. It's that and, kind of a combination. 
yeah, I, I think my, my, well, I definitely, my aesthetic definitely comes from living in the city in a, in a historic city where, you know, you've got old and new side by side and a, a, a carnival of surfaces like glass and concrete and steel and brick and asphalt. And so all of these things together, you know, I've just developed a sensitivity of making something that looks like it's, it's been around a long time. Mm, okay. And this is this is a this is a, a little bit large. It's not super large. It's, no, this is um yeah. this is five inches or six okay. six by six. This is part of a a larger series that I was uh, calling chorus lines. Uh, a lot of these pieces, like if I go, go back to what I said about sort of focusing on like one area of a painting, I got into the habit of when I started working on paper, which is much more forgiving. Um, I I started chopping up the work and just kind of focusing on what I liked just. And so um, after a while, what I had on the other side of the blade was just this stack of scraps. And so um, I kept them and I started giving them new life by lining them up with one another and um, kind of like chorus lines. They were just sort of meant to be in the background and not up front. And so these were just these were cut lines, these were drawn lines, they were sanded lines, all different type of things. And, and just, again, giving them another life, they they didn't make the you know center stage, but once I got all of these together, it was just really magical and, you know, sort of um, a, a, a blend of, of uh, different pieces. Just a, a wild guess, do you have like bags and bags of scraps <laughs> yes, they're but they're right the behind this laptop. There's like <laughs> right. stacks of them. Yes. Are they yeah. organized or is it just well this here's one and this is actually from that piece. That okay. Oh yeah. <laughs> right. So yeah. So I, I came across this piece. So mm -hmm. this is a, a, a triptych. Is these are this is three panels, correct? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So here's mm -hmm. where that Twombly influence really comes in. Mm -hmm. And um mm -hmm. I saw yeah. um Anton Tape Tapies. Oh I yes, yeah, yeah, T Tapies, Tapies. Tapies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I always. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Um, so I really see that in there, but for me, what what kind of got me on this was the was actually just the color. Um, oh yeah. And and the fact that you have this sort of gray background, but that that rusty red is mm -hmm. such an enjoyable color. And colors hit or miss with me um, because I so focus on the line and the shape shadow. I mean, color for me is just a, an emotional decision. You know, I could be in a, a mood one day and um, this was actually a larger piece. This was about 18 by 24 that I cut down and rearranged. In fact, this is photographed with these three particular panels, but this was, again, it was part of a larger installation that was on display with about 70 other pieces. Of are the these system. mounted or are they just flat they, on paper? They are, um, they are painted directly on cradle panels. Like okay. these are five inch panels. Okay. Yeah. And there you say so you have no need for framing then. No, no. But this one, this one did get framed. These are these are eight inch pieces on paper. Paper, yeah. Yes. Straight up do you, paper. Do you prepare on your papers first or do you just attack right on it? I do put a I do put a ground, I put gesso on the paper first. Um, I'm not really particular about the surface of the gesso. I just want to build up the surface. Then I do a layer or two of modeling paste, which gives it, you know, bumps and lumps and things like that. And then uh, I work into the modeling paste, both wet and dry. And usually on a larger piece of paper that I will cut down. Some of these eight by eights from this series um, were actually done on eight, on eight inch paper. They were not cut down. Mm. Mm -hmm. I, I like the sometimes the effects I know they're they're by accident but sometimes they're on purpose so I really like this, the reason I picked this one is um, a lot of references for you for you today I don't know why I was thinking about uh, what is it Goya's Pope where that's that screen comes down in front of his face oh uh, oh gosh yeah the so translucent you know a lot of um a lot of the work is done by removing work from the surface, remove, like I will put down a, a really heavy wet uh, wash. And then, I mean, I have towel, paper towels on the floor. There's probably more paint in the wastebasket. 
Um, <laughs> and so I, again, this is sort of like showing the history, showing the underneath, it brings people in. And I've been told people, you know, a lot of them, you know, will look at these for hours and they will see something different mm -hmm. each time. Yeah. That's why I like them. So um, I've got some questions that I need to ask you to, to get along. So one of the questions I, I normally start with was, do you remember your, as a kid, your first exposure to art? You know, I watched some of your other interviews and I, I knew I was going to get this question and I, I don't, okay. I really, I really don't. I, you know, did not come from a family where we looked at art or collected art. I mean, I could tell you the first Phillies game I went to, mm -hmm. the first Broadway show I went to, <laughs> um, but it wasn't until high school that I, you know, probably saw some art in the, in the museum that my big, the big thing that I think I saw that was impactful was uh, I saw a keeper show at the museum. Mm. And some keeper, the, the scale, the surface, the perspective, and the story behind it meant a lot to me at, at that time in my life. And I, that's what I looked at and thought, oh, I, I think I want to do that. See, you did answer that correctly. Okay. Because <laughs> that was, just, that was it just perfect. just wasn't, yeah, okay, good, good. Because good, now, good. That I, now that you said that, I, I'm thinking of his work, and I'm thinking of your work, and I, I can see that those textures, the depth mm -hmm, in, the, mm -hmm. in it. It's there. So, okay. so what does that mean? Like within high school, you decided to pursue in life and arts. Yes. Yeah. I had. Um. I, I think like a lot of artists, a lot of children. I mean, I started um doing things with paper and crayons as a kid, and I just never stopped. And I had explored a variety of forms of expression. Probably performing arts first, and then I. Loved photography and scrapbooking and videography when, you know, VHSs came around and I wrote poetry and, you know, refinished furniture, did a bunch of things, but I, I landed on drawing and painting in high school. I had a teacher that took particular focus on my abilities and um, helped me build a portfolio um, for college applications. So uh, this question, it's, it's a little long, so you bear with me. Uh, I see that you talk about time. Uh, yeah. especially in your work yeah and and it and I'm curious is when you're talking about time because mm -hmm. you, you mentioned it on your your website your bio and a few things are you talking about time the time period that occurs when you're making the work or are you talking more about time in general or or more about your your background in dealing with time I think it's in general I think I'd like, I'd rather be, I'd like it to be general because we all experience time. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I think I grew up with a love of storytelling in the past and both of my parents um, loved sharing stories and pictures, especially in, in, in videos and old eight millimeter films. And I just grew up listening to these old stories and I have just a, a reverence for time and the passage of time my time, even, you know, looking back just 10, 15 years, but just how time affects us all. And I'm, I'm actually, I'm older now and, and time means something different to me now and changes. And I, but I've been doing this for a long time, this, like, this concept of time. Yeah. <laughs> I read Stephen it... Hawking's Brief History of Time. Okay. Uh, right. uh, and, and that was, uh, way over my head intellectually but there were some there were some things in there that that were like little nuggets that i that yeah. i kept and carried with me but yeah in years since i read that uh mm. so i was i was asking that because i've come across other artists that talk about time but a lot of times they're only talking about the time in between the start and finish of a piece of artwork you know they're that specific time so i was just curious what kind of time you were talking about because it could mean a lot of different things yeah i mean yeah, I think for me, photography has always been the vehicle for doing like capturing time in real time and 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 saving it that way, but not not here in my work. No. So in in your process, in your creative process, speaking of starting and stopping, how does your creative process work for a piece? Do, do you do you have a plan when you go in to make things or is it more of a uh, on the moment, as, as you're making it, your your ideas change and evolve and um, I, I have a broad idea of what I want to accomplish each day when I come in. It's sort of like, okay, by the end of the day, I'm going to have something 
done or dried or cut or mounted or glued. Um, but not really, um, I don't really have a plan. Usually before I leave the studio every day, I have one or two things that are left incomplete so that when I do come in the next day, I have something to get started on right away so I don't get distracted. So does that mean your process for each work is is multiple days on the on a piece? Oh yes. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I think that's important yeah. to yeah. to know because that changes the nature oh. of work. Oh, so I have like little stations all over the studio. Like I have one place where I paint where I'm making a mess. I have another place where I'm sanding. And it sometimes it just depends on what I feel like doing that day. Sometimes I come to the studio, I don't even feel like working i will right. read i will take a nap i will you know do a bunch of other things but um but i, I have a general idea of whatever's on the table i'm working with you know if, if i'm cutting or gluing um, well then million dollar question how many pieces of art do you work on at a time <laughs> oh well maybe like i don't know about a dozen dozen yeah, like, okay yeah, well, they're, right. and they're small like if i'm doing like I'm, I'm working on an installation now and you know there's five or six pieces i have to make sure that i've got enough cut paper or enough material for all five and so you know they're kind of either laid out on the table they're up on the wall and sometimes mm. i'll start with oh i'll just do four and then i'm like well maybe i'll do six and then i put that down and then the next day i feel like exercising my arm and i'm gonna do do some more painting um i'm always fascinated by how artists work because it, i've seen such a wide variety you know I, I have a friend who makes like two paintings a year and he he, oh, he yeah. only starts one and he and he won't do anything else until he finishes it but i, I, I mean yeah. i can't work like that <laughs> i i've always i i've always been a little envious of artists that sort of have um like a recipe where they're like okay they've got their palette they know what it's going to look like mm -hmm. and you know they just crank this out but i was um i was always a channel changer as a kid my attention mm. span is you know <laughs> so sort of like what am i in the mood for so um that's the that's the title of your next series channel changing. channel channel changing sure, sure. <laughs> that's a good that's a good phrase do you mm -hmm. as you're working on stuff i mean i i can already guess the answer to this do you get to a point on some pieces where you just like nope and just just pitch it like it's it's not working it? or or do you keep on working through hmm. wait i just you're did you sorry so no so yeah i missed the end of your question do you keep on working through on a piece or oh you... absolutely yeah 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 sometimes i paint over it sometimes okay. um i will wipe it down i'll scratch it down yeah but there's there's never like forget it just throw it away this is not working kind of a thing you always no. you always kind of reuse it there's, no, there's always something yeah. there yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> so you you talked about um mixed media and you mentioned earlier that you you dipped into a little bit of a variety in in high school and college so do you, i'm curious like do you have you ever worked in in sculpture like as a serious like a part of a series or anything um, or, or any other mediums not until very recently. I did a workshop earlier this year with uh, the great Catherine Stanick, who is a cement sculptor. And um, that was just delightful in, in the sense that it, it, it tapped into all of my desires to touch things, scrape, and making them three-dimensional, walking around them. Um, it, it that that could I think that's I'm moving in that direction and I, I've noticed over the years my work has just gotten more and more voluminous and I think that is an inevitable stop along this path that I'm on. I'd love to see some sculptures. I'd be curious to know what you do and how that goes. Have you ever done printmaking? Oh yes, oh yes. I loved printmaking when I was studying printmaking. I just hated the. What I didn't love was that there, there was a little bit that was out of my control. Like, you, you know, you do so much, it comes out the other end and you look at it and it it's not really. I, I would imagine that you would embrace those happy accidents. I right? Well, you know, I did have a I did have a class called drawing into print, which was magical because I thought I can correct whatever I want. 
but um, it was kind of like photography too. I loved taking the pictures and I loved showing the pictures, but everything in between, all the chemical, the dark room, the film and, and all that, there were just so many scientific or environmental things that came between me and the end product, which is why drawing and painting and using my hands, it's just, it's just the, the pure, you know, no middle. It's man. direct. Yes. Yeah. 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 Well, I think you would do really well if you, if you had like a master printmaker working with you, like you oh, just tell sure. them, tell them would what to do. And get it. Would done. <laughs> I would yeah. love to see that because sure. I, I, your textures are so rich. I could really see you getting into aqua tints and sugar lips and all that mm, kind of stuff. I think mm. I, I, I just, I would love to see what you could do with that. So, well, I, I yeah, I follow ahead. a lot of printmakers on Instagram. I oh, do you? Yes, yes. Okay. So, so, mm. so you've been making art for a while. Mm. Uh, curious, how do you feel, say, when you first got out of college till now? Mm -hmm. How do you feel your work has changed over the years or has it not? know that the the work has changed a whole lot um I think I've gotten more confident about letting things be you know like um I used to have an idea that you know that a painting had to be a picture of something it had to mean something it had to have a symbol or you know there had to be a story behind it and um I just like let all that go like it's you know just <laughs> I I don't I don't have to have a reason for this I don't have to say uh, this uh -huh. is what it means you yeah. know and I and I worked so hard as a young artist thinking oh it's it needs to fit something I it needs to be something and no it doesn't, it doesn't. so that's how that's how you see the greatest evolution of your work that sort of dropping the need for a storyline and more exploring yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's that's the greatest one. I mean, I've I've gotten uh, you know I've I've worked with more materials. I've gotten a little more disciplined and uh, a little more, um, I guess you know more more uh, risky with my materials. But um, that to me was a big thing. Just like parting ways with some mm -hmm. of that non visual stuff. That's what one of the reasons I was attracted to your work is. Uh, you know, I find similarities in my own work with your work because it's mm -hmm. it's that handmade line is so mm -hmm. delicious. You know, like uh, one of the things I one of the artists I also thought of when you do those little uh, one off scratch marks like they're almost like rain. I can't help but think of Philip Gustin and his oh. wobbly, wonky lines. And I love the and especially yeah. be, and it's because of there's where I'm inundated with. Uh, you know, the these a lot of slick digital art now. And I think it's everywhere. I just see this rise of this, you know, yeah. rise of the slick. And mm -hmm. I and it makes me like go go backwards to to the handmade line. I think there's so much in that. That's why oh, I like your work. I mean, even even what's behind you, you know, it has that, oh, this? that wonderful <laughs> your <This>? both. <laughs> I like them both. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think it's great. Mm. Um so one of the things you mentioned is you followed uh, other artists on Instagram. Do you oh, find yeah. yourself going to um, like art shows? Do you go to shows or museums regularly or is oh, it? Yeah. Oh, sure. Certainly not as much as I did pre COVID, but um, you know, there's, there's a lot going on in Philly. Um, you know, I went down to Brandywine Museum a couple of weeks ago and saw the Wyeth show and I, I live close to the barn. So I, I did see the, um, oh, Modigliani did sculpture, you know, mm -hmm. there. Um, Does that energize you, when you, yes. when you see that stuff? I walk out of some shows and I think, okay, well, now I'm going to do that. Now I'm going to do houses. <laughs> I'm going to, you know, I, uh -huh. I've always been that way. Even with friends, you know, I I took a I took a, a, a ceramic course a couple of years ago with, with one of the local artists and I thought, well, that's it. I'm I'm now a ceramic artist, you know. But it, it, it was it it was the same thing. It was it was clay. It was touching. It was making marks. Mm -hmm. So it, it's all it's all the same thing, just different material. But I I I don't see enough art as, as much as I should. And and I think that's you know I can see a lot on social media. I can see a lot on YouTube. You know. Yeah. You know this is great. You don't have to 
really leave your house and pay for a train ticket up to New Although, York. You know? For me, there's nothing quite like being in person. Oh, yeah. And, and especially one of the things I wanted to ask you about is scale. So I've seen that you have made some larger paintings, mm -hmm. but a lot of the pieces that I'm finding are smaller yeah. or they're groups of smaller pieces. Yes. Is that a conscious thing? Is it because you run out of room or are no. you dying to make bigger? So when I was working large, um, again, I had this problem of making it compelling. Like, again, I would, I think, I think be, like this is, this is where I work, like right here, not like up there, like on a step ladder or whatever. And so one of the things I started doing was working small, which you know, I could pack a really good punch. And then, you know, having an installation where the work would have a, a larger presence on the wall. Um, so I would, I would be able to do that. Like I'm looking at a 48 inch square installation of 16 pieces. And um, I don't, I could have never done that if it was a 48 inch canvas. Right, I just, right. I lose interest yeah. really quickly. Yeah. So I got, we have time for just one final question. Uh, if you've seen this show before, then you know my final question, because I, I just love answering this one. I think, I now I forget that quickly, but I did, I, I do know what it, it is. Super simple. Yeah, you Go can use, your, you can use your cliff notes on this one. Oh, dear. What does, what does making art do for you? Oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. What does it do? I, I saw some of the other answers for this. Um, I think it just, it, um, hmm. it just, it reinforces for me what it is to be human, to, um, to make something and to connect with people at the, at the, at the most fundamental level with, with what you see. It's, it's not language. It's not music. It's just with your eyes. It's, um, and if, if, in addition to being fulfilling, but that to me is um, the hallmark of, of what I do. Mm -hmm. Good, good answer. Okay, all right. Just, <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Just made that up, by the way. That's I good, have, right I on the spot. Notes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, Donna, it was a pleasure speaking with you today. I wish I had oh more time. Same here, Craig, same uh, here. Th thank you very much for coming by today. And I wanna thank everybody who tuned in to watch our show today with Donna. And I really want to encourage you to not only like and subscribe, because that encourages us to make more of these, but if you have questions for Donna or anything, just leave them in the comments section. We, we really want to hear from you. So again, Donna, thank you very much for uh, spending some time with me to talk to me about your work. I really appreciate it. And I look forward to seeing your work in person. Great, great. Adios. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> bye, -bye. All